Hello, my friends, and welcome to Faith and Reason. Did you see the new uh, video with Biden making the sign of the cross when it came to abortion, uh, talking about, uh, you know, um, making abortions not available at later stages in pregnancy, and he makes the sign of the cross as if it's a bad thing? It's unbelievable. We have Father Merrick here and Frank Wright to react to that. Also, there's a new commercial out saying Biden is like God's choice for president. That and much, much more. Germany has gone completely insane. Thankfully, uh, Bishop Strickland is speaking out more and more strongly. All that and much more on this episode of Faith and Reason. Stay tuned. Frank, welcome to the program. Hello again. So, Father, if you could launch us off with a prayer, please. Greetings to one and all. Absolutely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So we're going to start off with this clip because this was so nuts. Let's listen to it together as we hear uh, President Biden making the sign of the cross, uh, pro-abortion sign of the cross, if you will. If you wouldn't mind rolling that, Walter. And then we come back here to the state of Florida where Ron DeSantis felt like he needed to run for president. And so 15 weeks wasn't good enough. We had to go to six weeks. So, you know how you make the sign of the cross when something horrible happens? I do, I've, you know, when you're taking off for a plane or something horrible happens or, you know, you're doing... And what is she talking about but protecting more lives? And Biden, who has campaigned this whole time on abortion as the major plank for his campaign, uh, then dares to invoke the sign of the cross. Father, I, I don't even know what to say about it. It's infuriating. It's gross. It's blasphemous. What, what's your take on this? Yes, it's all those things. It's all those things. It's also, I would add, pathetic to that list. It's pathetic because uh, the man as a politician, I've always found him a cheap politician. Uh, His stories, uh, the stories that he tells are, 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 I think it's it's very kind of people to call them stories. Uh, Some people would call them lies, Uh, but he's an actor and he's not a good one. He's not a good one. And so uh, uh, he does anything for dramatic effect. Uh, to show someone, I mean, <laughs> the counter sign of this is, is phenomenal. To show someone that you're 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 in disagreement with 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 a, a, a stricter abortion law by making the sign of the cross, it makes no sense to anybody except to the people who follow him, who are who are assured that he is a Catholic, and that he's a, that he's a representing somehow he's representing American Catholicism, which is. Pathetic, absolutely pathetic. Uh, I just read too the, that the uh, uh, the Pope he feels anyway. Let me put it this way: he feels that the, that the Pope has uh, has called him a, just a fine Catholic, a fine Catholic. So he wears that on his sleeve, and he does so pathetically. It's a disgrace, is what it is. It is indeed. I mean, for you know, to to back him up, it was the Pope who allows for this kind of Catholicism, in fact, encourages it when Nancy Pelosi famously went to the Vatican uh, after her bishop had finally suspended her from receiving Holy Communion. She did indeed receive Holy Communion at the Pope's papal mass. And uh, not only that, the Pope had met with her previously uh, to tell her and to speak publicly against the bishop, Archbishop Cordelion, uh, for daring to deny her Holy Communion. Uh, for being pro-abortion. So, uh, you know, Biden saying it wouldn't surprise me at all if uh, if uh, it, the Pope said to Biden, not only should he receive communion, but that he's a fine Catholic. Frank, your take. 
Well, if you look carefully at the video, you can see that Biden's probably not very good at even being acting as a Catholic. Obviously, he's a politician and they're largely performative as it is. And I think we can agree that he's hardly sincere in his Catholic conviction. But as a well, as a Catholic from Britain pointed out on Twitter, Brother Eccles, if you watch him closely, he appears to be making an inverted sign of the cross, which is either a dreadful mistake or an, an intentional indication of the God that he actually worships. Then look at it again and you'll see that he makes that sign very low. And he makes it at precisely the moment as well, where he's celebrating uh, a, a more aggressive abortionist stance. It, it's not merely scandalous, but it's um, suggestive of... Now, have a look at him now. If you watch where, where he goes with that with that sign, just as they mention uh, the, the reduction in the abortion. I mean, there we are. So I think Brother Eccles might have a point there, that this is, in fact, an inverted cross, intentional or not. Yeah, I don't know that Biden has the wherewithal to do something intentional that way. It is a, it is such a weird thing. It's like there is a new religion, a new false religion of, with all of the externals, or at least some of the externals of Catholicism um, in the name of Catholicism, if you will. But it's really a kind of a, a church of, um, a woke church. The, the, the prelates still run around in robes, um, but they promote a new, different gospel, a woke ideology as gospel. Um, and this is being promoted not only in America, uh, but also from Rome. And that's probably the saddest thing, because the proponents of and adherents of this new, different, false religion can look to Rome and to a lot of the highest ranking prelates in America as the ones representing the, their Catholic church, this, this false uh, version of the Catholic church, unbelievable. And sadly, it doesn't end there. Over the last week, you saw Thomas Rees, very uh, prominent Jesuit in America, uh, also um, making the same kind of idea, suggesting that uh, Biden is, in fact, God's pick for president of the United States. Now, he didn't make this video, but he promoted it. And uh, you got to see it to believe it. Watch this. On the eighth, down on God's paradise and said, I need a leader, someone to unite rather than divide, who stands on morals and values and doesn't idolize dictators and bullies. God said, I need someone to protect consumers and farmers from corporate greed workers from wage theft, students from crushing debt, homeowners from discriminatory lending, seniors from overpriced medicine, and loved ones from gun violence. God said I need someone with arms strong enough to protect the planet, strong enough to fight monstrous evils spreading across the globe and hold every side accountable for peace. God said I need someone willing to give their whole life in service, and so God made Biden, and God made us all. Together we make our democracy strong. Thank God we chose a faithful president who doesn't worship himself nor undermine the Constitution he swore to uphold. For such a time as this, we pray to God what is true in our hearts. Four more years. Um, okay. You, um, there's a lot you could say, but the fact that this was promoted by a Jesuit priest uh, is should be stunning people should be wondering how is that even possible mm, you don't really need to wonder though the jesuits have shown who they are in fact on march 17th this same father reese and the papal nuncio christophe pierre um as well as homosexual irish prime minister leo uh Varadkar, uh and <laughs> of course jesuit father james martin were all with President Joe Biden at the White House for the St. Patrick's Day brunch. Uh, Father, if I can get your commentary on that video, please, that would be great. How, I don't even know how to begin. <laughs> I don't, I'm serious. I don't know. How do you begin? It, it, you know, it, it, it reminds me of, of, of something that, that, that Bishop, uh, Bishop Strickland said last week or the week before when he was talking about practical atheists in the clergy.
Frank, your take. Well, it's remarkable to watch this spectacle. And God, one I thing it's very easy to forget is that Joe Biden, I, in his extremely no, long career be. as a, as a it, professional it's, it's, politician, it's has impossible. never been popular. That's not, that's it's, not, it's, it's he's not describing God. That he's being he's presented not as God. the anointed this is, savior. And it's, it's, it's actually, what is the word? Shameless? It, it's such a, shameless. It's such a shameless. preposterous exaggeration. It's shameless. But again, it's one that mirrors something that you yourself have said, John Henry, that the crisis in the church and the crisis in the world uh, the political crisis, are one and the same. They're all of a piece. What we have here is a kind of ritual behaviour without substance. It's to maintain the trappings or the appearance of both the church and liberal democracy, whilst doing everything that it forbade, everything that it is in fact the opposite of both of these doctrines. This man doesn't you know, more defends freedom and, and heals the world from division then President Zelensky presides over a democracy. It's it's a sham. And it really is an insult to the American people to to be compelled to take this kind of spectacle seriously. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, Bishop Strickland, in fact, has called it out. He, in fact, issued a call that was very stark and very, it was very needed, but it's a lot more bold than he's ever spoken before. Let me let me give you this. This was uh, you can go to lifesightnews.com, of course, for the full story. But these are some of the uh, highlights from his most recent letter. This is Bishop Strickland calling out apostasy in the church. He says it is of utmost importance that humanity Walter, embrace Jesus Christ in His church. However, the tremendous challenge of this is seen clearly in these times as His chosen vessel, the Church, the Catholic Church, that is which is plagued with human weakness and sinfulness, struggles against the one who has brought her into being, God's divine son. So he's saying the church is struggling against God's divine son. Um, and that's, of course, the, the earthly manifestation of the church and its members, uh, and especially the hierarchy he's focusing on here. And he says, the church is holy, yet composed of sinful human beings. And although guided by supernatural truth, she often gets bogged down in and even corrupted by things of this natural world. In our time, he continues, it appears that the overwhelming presence of fragile clay in the church threatens to obliterate the supernatural truth that is her heart and soul. Christ has promised us that the church will not be obliterated by the powers of hell, but we must make it our daily choice to live the supernatural truth that is Jesus Christ. Then he, he adds this, and get this, he says, too many prelates not only exhibit a lack of supernatural faith on their part, but they are also hell-bent on eliminating every vestige of supernatural faith from the church. This has been building momentum over many decades, but we must open our eyes to the crescendo of apostasy that we are now witnessing. He adds, whether in liturgy, doctrine, or simple everyday piety of Catholics, too many prelates and powerful forces in the Vatican are doing their best to dismantle every vestige of supernatural faith, as well as any understanding of the supernatural truth that Jesus Christ has revealed to us. Unbelievably powerful words from Bishop Joseph Strickland. Father, you take. Okay, uh, Father's internet got cut out there, but Frank, please. What, what's your take? Well, it's important to, to note that Bishop Strickland remarks, and I think quite rightly, on the fact that we are not, we're not just talking about some problematic statements from the Holy See. It's not just, oh, what does the Holy Father mean about this or about that? What, what does Amoris Laetitia mean, for example? What, 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 what does Fiducia Supplicans mean? We're not talking about word games. He strikes at the heart of the mystery and the meaning of the Catholic faith, and he says, rightly, I think, but the whole project, which whether, whether it's expressed by the synod of synodality or the movement towards what you might correctly call a new religion, is basically one which alters Catholic doctrine, which desacralizes the sacraments and the holy sacrifice of the mass, and which, which genuinely does move away from an acknowledgement of the real presence, which is the heart of the religion itself. Mm -hmm. This is an extremely timely, I think, but accurate warning about the degradation of Catholic worship and the fact that the doctrine, the observance of the sacraments, the liturgy themselves are changing under this process, visibly, and they have been, and that is the reason why we have so many confusing 
and hurtful statements from the Holy See, because it must be understood in the part of a wider process, which I think is genuinely towards something very much like a new religion, if you can call it that. Yeah, indeed. And the manifestations of this new religion are everywhere. I'm going to give you a few examples uh, from Germany, because Germany, a lot of people say, is, is sort of leading this, um, is most avant-garde, if you will, with regard to this new religion uh, that's being, you know, um, under the, it's the church with a false flag it, it's not the it's not the catholic church that we know but it is a false church being set up and being run by a lot of the potentates listen to this this is from uh the in germany there's actually 13 women uh they call them deacons in the spirit that have been commissioned um for uh, they did some training plan for female deacons and at an event the um which was actually if you can believe it praised by the president of the german bishops conference uh no less on april the 13th auxiliary bishop of the diocese of essen bishop uh ludger Schepers, commissioned 13 women who had completed a three and a half year training program with the women's diaconate network the bishop celebrated a mass and sort of certificate awarding ceremony for the 13 women in his capacity as a long-standing friend and supporter of the movement the bishop has a long history of heterodoxy by the way he was the first german catholic bishop to attend a homosexual blessing in 2022 and he was recently appointed by the german bishops as the first and i quote commissioner for queer pastoral care end quote um that's what we're coming to um, in the church, and that's why Bishop Strickland is warning so strongly uh, against this complete insanity. Uh, Father, I see that you're back with us. Your take. I am back, and, and you know what? I'm, I, I was commenting. I'm sorry for that. I don't know what happened. The, uh, uh, the, the, I was quoting Bishop Strickland when we were talking about Joe Biden mm -hmm. and that, that outrageous, I mean, the, I don't even know how to address it just it's it's off the wall uh one can only hope that uh, that he's lost uh part of his mental faculties and moral faculties also for for his own good for his own defense when it comes to eternal life however i'm not going to go there this question brings me also back to what bishop strickland said last week he talked about he didn't accuse people of being atheists but almost <laughs> Almost. He was almost there. What he did say, what he did say, and it was very prudent on his part, but also very strong, he accused people in the hierarchy and in the clergy, he's speaking to, of a practical atheism. Uh, they're acting like atheists. If they are not, in fact, they certainly are acting like it. And this is this is exactly what's coming out of Germany. I you, you, you have to say to yourself, do these people believe in God? And if they can say yes, it, I can tell you the honestly, it's not the same God I believe in. I, I, because I don't know what they're, what they're doing. They're destroying. They're destroying. It's like every, everything they can destroy, they do. They, they take one extra step to destroy. This is, not, uh, this is not how the church ever functioned and how it's not supposed to function at all. It's outrageous. And, and one thing I've got a question for you both. Uh, what is this uh, uh, deaconesses in the, in the spirit? What does that mean? Were they ordained or were, were, are they just nice people or do they, do they eat post toasties in the morning? What does that mean? It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. If you remember father on this show, probably uh, three programs ago, we were talking about this uh, female diaconate and uh, i was mentioning how with the advent and it didn't come from francis it actually came from john paul ii while he was ill sure but he never reversed it either and it wasn't reversed under benedict either but as soon as you already have extraordinary ministers of holy communion who are women uh female altar servers and female lectors you're 90 percent of the way there with this new uh fangled thing from germany the deacons in spirit that's exactly what uh, Archbishop Vigano predicted would come a diaconate for women. That's not really a diaconate, but looks like a diaconate, smells like yes. a diaconate and everything else. 
that's uh, that's exactly what he predicted. It's what's and Henry and Henry is, isn't it isn't it isn't it much like a, a blessing that isn't a blessing, but it looks like a blessing, but it isn't a blessing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Same thing.